a couple more examples of being able to evaluate limits as they go towards infinity. So this one, um, we have 6x cubed minus 4 divided by x to the fourth plus 4x squared. And we want to see what happens as x goes towards positive and negative infinity. We can use the same trick that we did last time um, to where we divide everything by the highest exponent in the denominator, which is x to the fourth power. Um, if we do that, then we are going to get, for part A, the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x cubed over x to the fourth minus 4 over x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus 4x squared over x to the fourth. And when we simplify that by subtracting exponents, lim as x approaches infinity of 6 over x to the fourth, uh, I'm sorry, 6 over x, that's a 3 up there, so I apologize, um, minus 4 over x to the fourth, divided by 1, since x4 over x4 is 1, plus 4 over x squared. Well, now we're going to apply the limit law, right? And so if we apply the limit, and again, this technically isn't correct, but let's just think of it like that. So 6 over infinity, 4 over infinity to the fourth, 1 plus 4 over infinity squared. And like we said a couple times, anytime you have an infinity in the denominator and a constant in the numerator goes to 0. So we get 0 minus 0 over 1 plus 0 which is 0 over 1, which is 0, right? Now, we can just reuse the algebra right here because we haven't applied a limit, and we could do part B. So for part B, we're going to have our limit as x approaches negative infinity this time. And we have 6 over x minus, um, what do we have over here? 4 over x to the fourth. And then divided by 1 plus 4 over x to the fourth, or x squared, excuse me. And now we're going to substitute, quote unquote, negative infinity, so we have 6 over negative infinity minus 4 over negative infinity to the fourth divided by 1 plus 4 over negative infinity squared. And just like we saw a moment ago, anytime you have infinity in the denominator, whether it be positive or negative, and a constant numerator, it goes to 0. So this just turns into 0 minus 0 over 1 plus 0, which is 0 over 1, which is once again 0. And we certainly could, if we wanted to, go through and just verify that by using our graphing calculator. Right. Now, a little trick that might be helpful as you guys go along and you're doing these is to just look at the degrees sometimes of the numerator and the denominator. Right? And there's basically a really shortcut rule to this. Um, so let me clear out some room so that way I can show you the rule for this, um, or the shortcut rule, if you would. All right, so if the degrees of the numerators are the same, all right, so let's say if we have lim as x approaches infinity of, let's say, 2x squared minus x divided by 3x squared plus 1. In other words, we have the same powers or the same degree in the numerator and denominator. Well, all we're going to do is just take the two numbers in front, and that's going to be the limit. We don't have to do any of the division, all right? So, and that's, again, if we have an infinite limit only, all right? So this would be equal to two-thirds. Now, if you don't believe me, divide everything by x squared, but what you remember is when you divide by x squared, those are going to go to zero, the x squareds are going to cancel, and you're just left with two-thirds. If the degree of the denominator is bigger, okay, so lim as x approaches infinity, let's say this time 2x minus 1 over x squared, 
let's say 3x squared plus 1. Okay. If that's the case, to where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, well, that's going to be equal to 0. Right? And what's going to happen is all the terms are going to go to 0 except for the highest degree. In fact, isn't that what just happened in the previous example? The highest degree was 4, right? And the numerator had a lower degree. And so what happened was everything canceled out except for this term that had the x and the fourth in it. All right, so nice and easy for that one. Um, by the way, the previous example, notice that the degrees were the same. They both had fifth powers. So we just take the toe coefficient, 20 over 4, which is equal to 5 which is exactly what we got for both the positive and the negative um, limit. Okay, so just a couple little tricks to help you as you're going through this. Um, one last trick is that if the limit as x approaches infinity um, of, let's say the, the degree of the numerator is greater, so 2x cubed um, minus x squared divided by 3x squared plus 1 or something like that this would go off to infinity, all right? So if the degree of the, um, and I, I think I flipped this right here. This should be if the degree of the numerator is, um, oh, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. This one is the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, all right? So that means it's either going to go to positive or negative infinity, depending upon what this is going towards. My recommendation would be to go through and just check by using your calculator. All right, um, let's take a look at one last example of this, all right? And this is one to where you're gonna have to do a little bit more algebra than usual, all right? So we have this limit, um, w approaches infinity, it doesn't really matter what the variable is, all right? But w approaches infinity of, 20 or 40w squared plus 8w plus 9, 25w to the fourth plus w cubed. All right, so I'm going to clear out some room. Now, usually what we do is we divide by the highest power in the denominator, but this square root is kind of affecting that. So what we have to do is we have to kind of think of it as the square root of w to the fourth, which is w squared. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by w squared. All right, so does that make sense, hopefully, to you guys? Well, you can't answer me, but hopefully, if you have a radical, you just take the square root. Um, if it was the cube root of w to the fourth, then you would divide everything by w to the four thirds. All right, so now remember, a square root has an implicit two up there, so you would just divide four by two. All right, so anyway, so now we're going to get the limit as w approaches infinity of 40 w squared over w squared um, plus 8w over w squared plus 9 over w squared. And you're going to divide all of that, and this is where it's going to start getting a little bit messy. 25w to the fourth plus w cubed over w squared. All right, so we haven't really done anything too outlandish, I think, at this point. Okay, we're just going through and we're just dividing everything by w squared, which is the highest power. Now we're going to simplify the numerator, and that's easy. So limits w approaches infinity. So 40 w squared over w squared, that just becomes 40. 8w over w squared becomes 8 over w. 9 over w squared, we can't do anything with. All right. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to move the w square underneath of the radical. And if we do that, some algebra magic, this is going to become 25w to the fourth plus w cubed divided by w to the fourth because we're moving it under the radical. All right, so let's make sure we understand why this is. Okay. Well, wouldn't it be true if I took the square root of w to the fourth, that would be w squared. So if I put w squared back under a radical, it has to be w to the fourth. So that's why that is. All right, so just a little bit of algebraic um, manipulation necessary to do this problem. 
Now what we can do is we can break this up into two separate fractions. Okay, we still haven't applied the limit, but we're getting really close to the end of this one. So lim as w approaches infinity. Um, remember the numerator, we had 40 plus 8 over w plus 9 over w squared. We're going to break this up into two terms. And 25w to the fourth over w to the fourth plus w cubed over w to the fourth. And then finally, we just simplify everything. So that's the limit as w approaches infinity of 40 plus 8 over w plus 9 over w squared divided by, now this just becomes 25, w cubed over w4 becomes w, I'm sorry, 1 over w, because we have 3 on top, 4 on the bottom, so that means we end up with 1 on the bottom. And finally, we can apply the limit rule, right? So this is going to be equal to 40 plus 8 over infinity plus 9 over infinity square divided by the square root of 25 plus 1 over infinity. Um, we know the rule. Anytime we divide by infinity, it just goes to 0. So we're going to be left with 40 over root 25, otherwise known as 40 over 5, otherwise known as 8. Again, if you don't trust the answer, go into your calculator, graph it, and see if the asymptote as x approaches infinity does indeed become 8. And it should. All right. So hopefully this helps you to be able to um, evaluate these limits as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. In the last section for chapter two, we're going to start taking a look at continuity, and we're also going to be taking a look at how that can be applied to some of what we've already been seeing before.